Welcome to Module 12 or our presentation on the nervous system. In this part of the lecture, we will discuss the gross anatomy of the brain, the spinal cord, and locate some of the clinically important peripheral nerves in the body. This module is divided into five parts. The first part will discuss the general feature of the nervous system as well as the embryologic derivation of the adult brain parts. The second part will focus on the anatomy of the major brain parts. The third part is dedicated for the other parts of the brain like the ventricles and the layers of the meninges. The fourth part is focused solely on the cranial nerves while the last part is all about the anatomy of the spinal cord. Please note that we will discuss only the basic parts of the brain and the spinal cord. A detailed discussion can be provided in neuroanatomy courses which is not part of this subject. Some of the topics are also well discussed in physiology and histology courses. At the end of this module, you should be able to identify the parts of the brain, locate the different cranial nerves, identify the parts of a section of a spinal cord, and identify the major branches of the spinal nerves and the muscles they innervate. The nervous system is the part of the body that informs an animal about its environment, both internal and external, and initiates responses to that environment. As we discussed in the previous modules, other body systems are specialized to perform various life-sustaining functions such as locomotion, digestion, respiration, and circulation. And it is essential that these functions be regulated and coordinated by the nervous system. For us to appreciate the anatomy of this system, we will also discuss some of its main function in the body. The system is divided into a central nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system composed of the cranial and the spinal nerves. Before we start identifying the gross anatomy of the different parts of the nervous system, let us have a first quick review of the embryological derivation of the system for us to appreciate the adult brain structures. Remember from your embryology, that the nervous system was derived from the ectoderm starting with the ectodermal thickening called the neural plate. Eventually, this neural plate will become a groove called neural groove and later will close to form the neural tube. The rostral end of the neural tube will form the three brain vesicles called the prosencephalon or the forebrain, the mesencephalon or the midbrain, and the rhombencephalon or the hindbrain. Subsequently, the forebrain and the hindbrain differentiate further, producing the five primary divisions of the brain, the telencephalon, the diencephalon, the mesencephalon, the metencephalon, and the myelencephalon. The adult brain structures will arise from these five brain vesicles as shown here. The telencephalon will become the cerebrum. The diencephalon will become the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The mesencephalon will become the midbrain, the metencephalon will become the pons and the cerebellum, while the myelencephalon will become the adult medulla oblongata. The distal end of the neural tube will become the adult spinal cord. Now let us locate those brain structures in the adult brain. Grossly, the brain can be divided into three major subdivisions, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. Here is a schematic illustration showing the different brain division. The cerebrum is composed of the left and the right cerebral hemisphere. The cerebellum is represented by the cerebellum itself, while the brainstem is composed of the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The brainstem connects the cerebrum with the spinal cord. Also in the brain, especially in the cerebrum, we can see numerous folds and depression. The folds are called gyri, while the depression between two gyri are called grooves. The deep grooves are called fissures, while the shallow grooves are called sulci. There are two distinct fissures in the brain. The first is the longitudinal fissure, which divides the two cerebral hemispheres as shown here. This is covered by a fold of dura mater called falx cerebri. The second is the transverse fissure which separates the cerebellum from the two cerebral hemispheres. This is covered by another fold of dura mater called tentorium cerebelli. At this point, we will now discuss the anatomy of each part of the brain. 
Let us begin with the cerebrum. As mentioned, the cerebrum is derived from the telencephalon and is composed of the right and left cerebral hemispheres. Take note that this is the largest part of the brain. Physiologically, the cerebrum is divided into four lobes. The frontal lobe, which is the most rostral part, is responsible for the cognitive functions and control of voluntary movement or activity. The temporal lobe is located at the lateral side of the cerebrum, caudoventral to the lateral fissure, and is responsible for the processing of sound recognition. The parietal lobe is the dorsal part of the cerebrum and is responsible for the processing of sensations such as taste and touch. The occipital lobe is the most caudal and responsible for the processing of vision. In addition, there is a fifth lobe called insula. As depicted here, it is located deep within the lateral sulcus of each cerebral hemisphere, hidden below parts of the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes. This lobe is believed to be responsible for consciousness and play a role in diverse functions usually linked to emotion. It is also important in the anatomy of the cerebrum to locate the central sulcus. The central sulcus forms the boundary between the frontal and the parietal lobes on the lateral and medial surfaces of the cerebral hemispheres. The identification of this boundary is important for us to locate the precentral gyrus and the postcentral gyrus. Take note that the precentral gyrus is the anatomical location of the primary motor cortex of the brain and is responsible for the control of voluntary movement. On the other hand, the postcentral gyrus is the anatomical location of the primary somatosensory cortex, the main sensory receptive area for the sense of touch. You will have a more detailed discussion about this on your physiology courses in the future. And that ends the first part of this five-part module. As a summary, we already discussed the embryologic derivation of the major brain parts and started learning the anatomy of the largest part of the brain, which is the cerebrum. You may now proceed to the second part of this module, which will tackle the remaining major parts of the brain.